Blessed be the name of the Lord. I am thanking the Lord for uh, the great privilege. One, once again, I got to tell you all about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Many people are confused today about the baptism of the Holy Ghost because of these kinds of preachers like uh, Jesse Smith and uh, others. They are confusing the people and by their false explanation because they try to explain the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is very, uh, you know, very deeper things you cannot understand because if I, if I speak uh, St. John chapter 3 when Nicodemus came to Jesus Christ and he asked the, he, he was speaking about, he was saying that you are a good teacher and Jesus Christ was saying to him, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. See means understanding. That is what Brother Branham taught us. What is see is understanding. All this we have learned from William Branham's message. William Branham is the only one prophet who taught us a right thing from the Bible. And these kinds of bastard born hypocrites like Jesse Smith, they have their agenda. You know, that agenda is nothing but they want to teach something more than uh, what William Branham has taught. That is what their agenda. That is what they are doing now. You know, they are confusing and you know, many, many uh, people, not, uh, no, not only Jesse Smith, others also there. If we get a chance to expose them, we will expose them. We don't hesitate because... These are the people are mainly <coughs> trying to exalt themselves. They elevate themselves more than William Branham's uh, ministry. William Branham's ministry is of God. God had sent him and God given him a great understanding on the Bible. And uh, the Branham preached the great, great, great messages. So therefore we, ha we are going after the William Branham's teaching. So William Branham, uh, you know, he... Even he spoke about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and go back to the Pentecost. Because actually, baptism of the Holy Ghost, we have to observe 2000 years back in Jerusalem when the disciples went to the 120 people, went into the upper room. Yes, went into the upper room and they waited and they received the power from above. And Jesus Christ told them, uh, tarry you at Jerusalem until you endured by the power and uh, the uh, and the promise of the Father. You know, the promise of the Father is the main thing. That is nothing but the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Promise of the Father is nothing but the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is entirely different course and uh, you and I cannot claim that we have already been baptized by the Holy Ghost unless until we have experiencing those things. We should have, ex because Brother Branham always says, Pentecost is an experience, he says. Pentecost is an experience. You cannot claim that you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost without having that experience. Now, Jesse, uh, Jesse Smith saying in this, I have, uh, I have uploaded the video clip of uh, uh, Jesse, uh, Jesse Smith uh, and there he says, uh, uh, that we all have that baptism of the Holy Ghost in the soul because uh, of course baptism of the Holy Ghost is in the soul and uh, that but the soul should have the word the word of God but Jesse Smith don't have that word you know Jesse Smith soul is not uh, is, is a corrupted soul Jesse Smith soul is corrupted how can the upon the corruption the baptism of the Holy Ghost takes place that there is nobody today after William Branham I want to tell you after William Branham listen carefully I can challenge you my email ID my telephone number everything is there none of the people none of the person or ministers or anyone in the whole world after William Branham had never had the baptism of the Holy Ghost that power never came I challenge you all that they are saying that baptism of the Holy Ghost is that different that I will prove you today with only one quotation I will prove you. With one quotation I will prove you. And Jesse Smith also speaks about that. 
And Jesse Smith, uh, like a theologian, he was talks about baptism of the Holy Ghost. He don't know what is the bab- he don't know what is the program. How God poured out the Spirit in the first century? How He poured out the Spirit? What all things was required, and how the ministry was set up and prepared those 120 people, and they went in went to the upper room and waited. And Bible speaks about that. And they have seen the uh, cloven uh, tongues, you know, that the, the tongues of fire came upon them and they received the power, all those things. So, my dear brother, precious brothers and sisters, don't be deceived because this is, uh, this is very important. Even I have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We have the Holy Spirit, no doubt. Everybody, we have the Holy Spirit because we have given in a measure. Now we have the Holy Spirit in a measure. Some, somehow we have received the Holy Spirit because we received the message after you receive the truth. Because Bible says uh, that when the Holy Spirit will come, listen carefully. When the Holy, the, that is what the Bible taught us. When the Holy Spirit will come, He will lead you into all the truth because all this truth have led by the Holy Spirit. Ah, uh, that that and truth will make you free. That is one thing. And we were that holy, the, what the Holy Spirit we have now is uh, actually keeping us away from the sin of the world, adultery, fornication, and all kinds of sins, all kinds of unbelief. But that is not enough. In order to go in the rapture, this Holy Spirit, what we received now, is not enough. We must have the Holy Spirit without measure. Yes, without measure, full fullness of the Holy Ghost. Baptism of fullness of the power must come. That only can, because the Romans, the, the, the book of Romans says, the spirit that quickeneth the, quicken Christ from the dead, if the same spirit is in you, it will quickeneth you, it says. So that same spirit, the same baptism of the Holy Ghost. So therefore, the language used by all these preachers concerning the baptism of the Holy Ghost is wrong. That most of the uh, ministers... Pastors still believe they have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but they are not even doing one in the one thing, one finger. They are not even moving the kingdom of devil. They cannot move the kingdom of devil with the finger because Jesus said, "If I uh, if I do that things, then well, how you will do it?" So he he moved the kingdom of God. So he see you. They cannot move the kingdom of devil with their one finger. So that, that is why they don't do the work. We have forget about Peter, James and John and Paul and they cannot do the, perform the miracles and signs and wonders what even William Branham performed. Yes, because William Branham had the fullness of the Holy Ghost. He had the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He had the token. He alone in 20th century and 21st century that the bride of Christ will going to receive the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the great power of the Holy Ghost great outpouring just like on the day of Pentecost. So until then we have to shut our mouth and waiting for the great power to come. Then for that many things are there I don't want to bring out in this uh, in this video because uh, you humble your heart now after you hearing this. Several things are there. The location where the Holy Ghost is going to come is not India, it is not Germany, it is not uh, anywhere. Okay, uh, uh, that the particular location that uh, outpouring will going to come first and then the, the set of people will waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and uh, just like it was in the first century and uh, after William Branham, we must have this, uh, uh, he must have the full revealed word. So that full revealed words, re- revealed word, that all things are there. I don't want to bring out all those things, but I want to tell you according to William Branham's message, what you, what these people are believing, even Jesse Smith told, you can hear that. He said, all that we have today, the baptism of the Holy Ghost in our soul, like that he was saying, he's saying that. But it is wrong. Jesse Smith don't even have the word of God inside his soul. His soul is full of corrupted. He has not received the uh, true word of God. He has not met the revealed word ministry. He never understood the revealed word ministry. He never recognized the revealed word ministry. Then how can he have the baptism of the Holy Ghost without uh, knowing the revealed word ministry? Why, oh, yes, sir, he don't know, and uh, he is uh, simply he is fooling the you know silly woman 
uh, at the streets like that. He's simply fooling that. That's all he's doing. Simply wasting the time. I can challenge any time. And we have no time to take up the challenge. You know, just uh, by the grace of God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I am bringing out these kinds of YouTube so that let the people may understand. Whoever watch this YouTube, you watch and get the benefit. That's all. We are doing that. Nothing else. We don't want to fame or we don't want to elevate ourselves. We don't want to say that we are big ministers and we are big pastors. Oh, pastor, that's so and so pastor. After this, no, we don't want to do that. We are just helping the people. Well, since these kinds of false prophets and false teachers, false pastors are, uh, you know, they are moving around the world and uh, uh, fooling the people and deceiving the people. So we are helping them. So now I want to read one of the quotes of the William Branham. Here he says, listen carefully. Now here he says. <laughs> The choice of your conduct, you could, you can't mix it now. You are either for God or against God. And the outward expression shows exactly what is on the inside. See, the cockleburr, many of you think, I got the, see, many of you think, I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to heaven. So many people unquote, many people are thinking, I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I am going to heaven. That don't mean one thing that you are going to heaven. Uh -huh. No sir, you can have the baptism of the Holy Ghost every hour in your life and still be lost and go to hell. The Bible said so. That is exactly right. Leadership 1965, unquote. Now, William Branham speaks... What kind of baptism he speaks here? This baptism of the Holy Ghost is coming upon the gifts like 1906. You all may be knowing that Ajusa Street, there was a great revival took place. And a Negro called William Joseph Seymour and he received the uh, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Same. But uh, he, the, it, it, uh, the gift started to operate that came upon the gifts, not upon the word of God, because Brother Branham did not come. That time Brother Branham was not there, so that baptism, Brother Branham is saying, speaking about that baptism, and all these people, including this uh, Jesse Smith, uh, you know, uh, claiming that he, ha he, he too have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that one. Because William Branham, many of the messages he, uh, he told, uh, lift up your, how many received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? So he mean to say, 1906, that kind of baptism, that is, that is, uh, that is not for the bride. That is not for, because bride is full of the word. Bride received the word because word did not come until William Branham came into scene. There was no word. William Seymour never received the word. Who received the word then? Brother Branham received the word, the word came to William Branham and when word came to William Branham, out of that word the bride is going to be uh, uh, prepared and bride will receive the word and that word, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will come upon that word, that is different now, any, uh, the Peter James John, all they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, did they go to hell? No, they could not go to hell because that baptism of the Holy Ghost came upon the word what the what word they received upon the word that baptism of the Holy Ghost came not upon the person upon the word because that word is living in their soul when the soul received the word and the wor word staying living in the soul and producing the same life of Christ then upon that the power of God is coming and residenting upon that word that is the real baptism of the Holy Ghost but whereas this fellow is saying that uh, even we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost we also have wrong Jesse Smith is wrong. He never, he don't know what is, uh, he, he, I, I don't think that he even have the measure of the Holy Spirit. I don't think so. So therefore, these are all wrong teaching, wrong explanation, false explanation. Don't ever give heed to that. Understand? So that, that, that is why William Branham says, you may receive the baptism. Of, what kind of baptism of the Holy Ghost? Same thing, 1906. Because they prayed and prayed, prayed, and God poured out the Spirit that came upon the gift, not upon the word. The gift started to operate. And you know the last stages of those ministers. How? Some fell in the homosex, some fell in that, like Samson received. You see, Samson also received the same power, like the on the day of the Pentecost, those disciples were received the same outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Even Samson had the same thing. But what Samson did, 
he went to the prostitute house and had a, uh, affairs with the prostitute uh, or woman and uh, committed adultery and later his eyes were removed so that is the condition today this all this pentecostal eyes is removed they have no eyes eyesight so therefore they are blind they could not see the uh, future what is what will going to take place so that is the condition that is the samson it did not go into the soul because soul was not prepared to receive the great outpouring of the holy spirit but whereas today the, the god has some people on the earth the, the souls are prepared and uh, the, uh, the, the, the word of God, the revelation hit those souls and they are prepared. The time comes, God will send the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, no one will go in the rapture. Yes, nobody will go in the rapture. So, to, in order to go in the rapture, you cannot go, you cannot wait for the aeroplane or rocket to take you off the earth. So the only thing, only the power, no aeroplane power, no rocket power or no missile power can carry you in the rapture. Only the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, only the baptism of the Holy Ghost can alone carry you in the rapture. Just like Jesus was carried in the rapture. Do you believe that? Jesus went into the heaven. It was the rapture. So you and I should go in the same manner. Nobody could stop Jesus. He was uh, ascending into the heaven. Such a way, it's no engine started or no sound started. He was close slowly slowly lifted up from the ground and went into the cloud and cloud carried him into the heavens that that is what so i tell you today you are going to hear first jesse smith what he speaks about uh, uh, mixed up for baptism he is mixed up he this and that and that and judas and that this oh my all these things he mixed up i tell you you can hear him then i will go into play brother william branham's uh, uh, brother william branham's uh, uh, course and uh, audio course. God bless you. Then we'll look at two types of temperance. Then we'll look at four kinds of fruits. And lastly, we'll look at two types of godliness. Let's begin with two types of fillings. Friends, this topic is actually part of one of the mysteries of God. It's spoken of in Colossians chapter 1. It's the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the two types of fillings are the filling of the Holy Ghost in the human spirit or mind. And the second kind is the filling or the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the soul. And these are two different types of fillings. This revelation is important for understanding both the Old Testament and the New Testament, and also specific quotes from God's prophet, Brother Branham. So beginning in the Old Testament, the Bible says in numerous places that people were filled with the Spirit of God. And of course, this can only mean in the human spirit. Pharaoh recognized God's Spirit in Joseph in Genesis 41, verse 38. Pharaoh said, A man in whom the Spirit of God is. Exodus 28 verse 3 says, Wise-hearted Jews were filled with the spirit of wisdom in order to make Aaron's priestly garments. Exodus 31 verses 2 through 5 says, Bezalel was filled with the spirit of God in all manner of workmanship. And there are many more examples such as Caleb and Joshua. And then even in the Gospels, the Bible says John the Baptist and his parents were filled with the Holy Spirit. And of course, this can only mean in the human spirit or the mind. And the proof of this is found in John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. Jesus stood and cried and said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Then in verse 39, he said, This spake he of the Spirit, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So John 7, 37 through 39 is a major scripture for understanding these two types of fillings. Anyone before the day of Pentecost, except for Jesus, had the filling of the Holy Spirit in their mind or human spirit only. And then beginning on the day of Pentecost, sinners saved by grace that were justified and sanctified could be filled with the Holy Ghost in their souls. And then every person baptized with the Holy Ghost thereafter could be baptized in the soul. But of course we know few would find that narrow road. But there have been born again, Holy Ghost baptized saints in their souls since the day of Pentecost and still to this day. I believe I'm one of them by the grace of God and I trust you are as well.
With the correct understanding of this topic, friends, on the two different kinds of feelings, it helps us better understand quotes from Brother Branham that say something like this, a believer can be filled with the Holy Spirit and yet still be lost and go to hell. Well, how can this make sense? world in our churches. If we're a Pentecost, let's be Pentecost. Amen. Let's act like Pentecost. Amen. Let's live like Pentecost. Amen. Let's live for the Pentecostal Amen. blessing Amen. and do the things that Pentecost promised us. Amen. We don't need Pente- Pentecost. is not a denomination. Pentecost is an experience. Amen. That's when you become a lamb and the dove gets a hold of you and starts leading you. That's when we are our Pentecost. That's what happened up there when God sent up his lamb and he, he died for our sins. And, and then the dove came back down on the day of Pentecost and led the church, the same Holy Spirit that came up on the first lamb at Jordan. That's the same one that leads today. Amen. And now when you go to snort and say, I'm so-and-so, I belong to this denomination. We don't. Amen. Amen. But somewhere, surely, Jehovah has a man that he can put his hands on. Yeah. You will not compromise with them. Yes. Godly young Amen. organization who will swing the people back to the rock Christ Amen. Jesus, back to the original Pentecost and the original Holy Ghost, Amen. with the original signs and original ones. Hallelujah. Yes. The Lord. Hallelujah. Surely he's got one yes. Amen. who will not break down no. under any kind of a persecution, Amen. run out, cancel out, fall out, anything else. Amen. They'll stay with him. God never blesses Israel till she gets to her homeland. God will never bless you a Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, or a Pilgrim, Holiness, Nazarene, Church of Christ, or or a Pentecostal organization. He'll never bless you that way. Come back to the homeland, to the beginning, back to the Pentecostal experience like it happened on the day of Pentecost. Amen. When the power of the living God changed those thousands of people and set their heart aflame with the power of God that showed genuine, not impersonated signs, not some made up telepathy, not some mockery that got into a rat race like we got in America. Who can have the biggest tent or who can have the biggest crowd? Amen. What difference does that make Amen. to God? Amen. God wants the people honest and hard yes. not to be proud. Amen. And we all got a rat race here running. Yes. What a disgrace to see if we can add a thousand more to our organization. Yes. It's a disgrace. He wants us back to the truth, back to the spirit. Back to the right line. Back to a highway in Christ. Back to the truth. How can he ever bless us the way we go? He won't. He never blessed Israel until they come back to the promised land. And when they got back in the promised land, signs and wonders began to happen. He sent a man right down among them by the name of Moses. What did this Moses come down? Peter said, it's to you and to your children. Damn, it's far off. Now we don't have to get some kind of a makeup, some kind of emotional or mental or makeup. We don't have to take something the devil to hand down. But every believer that comes from the altar to the consecrated life to the baptism of the Holy Ghost can get not only a mouthful but a soul full of the original baptism of the Holy Ghost that fell on the day of Pentecost that will bring the same result as it did on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Are the promises of your children and your children's children and of them as far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Brethren, the same Holy Spirit that fell on the day of Pentecost that brought them results then will bring the same results to every believer tonight that's willing to consecrate their life to enter into the holies of holies by the blood of the Lord Jesus. It'll break down traditions. It'll change man's heart. It'll melt you into one person in Christ Jesus. Send an old-fashioned sweeping revival across this country. Amen. What we need today, we need an old-fashioned, God-sent, heaven-bought, Holy Ghost-brought revival. Amen. Not just a little bitty shaking up or a little emotional work up, but an old-fashioned dying out self-consecrating. Hallelujah!
Backwood, sky blue, sin killing religion. Amen. They won't whitewash you, it'll wash you white. The devil will whitewash everything that he can, but God washes white. And that's what we need today is an old passion, God sent revival that'll just break down the hearts of the people and bring all these denominations into one great big unified group of the glory of God. That's what the church is in need of today. And the only way that God will ever receive a man is when he comes on the basis of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ with the same baptism of the Holy Ghost, with the same power, with the same signs, with the same wonders, with the same glory, with the same miracles, with just exactly like it was back there when he was tore apart. The Holy Ghost is here today bringing a church together and make the same kind of a church it was on the day of Pentecost. On the basis of the shed blood, God's covenant, when Christ was tore apart. His body was received up, and his spirit come on the earth to look out a church for him. And here it is, bringing in the same thing with the same signs, the same wonders, the same things Jesus did, that you shall do also, I'll be with you, even in you to the end of the world. And here we are on the basis of the shed blood. Don't you want to come to such as that, friend? The life. You come because you have been warned of God, you've accepted it, and you, when you come here and bow your heads and surrender to God and repent of your sins, you are born again. You are a candidate then to be baptized into the church by the Holy Ghost, into the body of Christ. There's only one baptism. That's Holy Ghost baptism. By one Spirit, we are all baptized into one body. You become a believer or born again when you believe. He that heareth my words believeth on him and sent me has everlasting life right now. But God baptizes you into the body and puts you into the service by the Holy Ghost. This is what you do for God. That's what God does for you. There's the difference. You repent and accept what God has done. Then God gives you the next, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Peter said today at Pentecost, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to them as far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. This, this is the same gospel that Peter preached at the day of Pentecost. Same signs, same wonders, same thing, same Jesus. Just closing now, so I'll be sure I got everyone. Together with every other scripture in the Bible. But just trying to make it just a briefly, plain as I know how to make it. No, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you then have the new birth. When you believe on the Lord, you receive a new thought, a new life. But it isn't the baptism of the Holy Ghost. See, you've got the new birth when you believe. You've got eternal life. It's a gift of God that's given to you through sovereign grace by accepting the gift that God is giving to you. He, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath eternal life, has everlasting life. That's the new birth. You're converted. It means you're turned around. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit puts you into the body of Christ subject to the gifts for service. It doesn't make you any more of a Christian it just puts you into the body of gifts. See? Now, by one Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, we're all baptized into one body. Now, says Paul, there are different uh, uh, gifts. And in this body is nine spiritual gifts. And in this body, you have to be baptized into the body to possess one of these gifts. They come with the body. But now, as far as having eternal life, and being a Christian, you are a Christian the moment you believe. Now, that's not make-believe. That's truly believe on the Lord Jesus and accept.